Hey there, happy day 22 of our Get Up and Go Challenge. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. We're going to talk about our soap. Yesterday we talked about our primary question. Did you come up with and figure out what your primary question is? We all have one. Do you know what yours is? And if you do, does it serve you? Great, run with it. If it doesn't, if it's something like mine was yesterday, which I shared yesterday, maybe you want to rethink that and pick something else. Guess what? It's like anything else. We can pick something else. So today we are back on the soap framework and I said, let's go ahead and pick another area or aspect of your life. Share that in the comments below what area you want to work on this time. And I am working on relationships, the relationship tag. Well, that one says financials, but there's one in here that says R for relationships. And so whatever area you decide, we're going to go through an example this time through the soap framework about, um, using the framework and applying it to the area of relationships. Now, with respect to relationships, uh, we're going to talk about soap and story today. And I'm going to actually um, to share a, a strategy that I developed a long, long time ago, actually as a teenager, called the imaginary friend. And I don't know if you've had an imaginary friend or not, but I actually did have an imaginary friend. It turns out that my dad had an imaginary friend. And a lot of people... Have imaginary friends now I had three sisters growing up and an AFS sister in high school so you might ask why the heck would I have an imaginary friend now the, the truth is and the secret is I created an imaginary friend his name was George and he was a sea captain who lived in my closet to literally scare my sisters and keep them out of my bedroom now, I thought it was brilliant at the time but it ended up being um, in my imagination, I could bounce ideas off an authority figure or somebody that I seemed and deemed wiser and older and more mature than I was. So as a young teenager, it was actually a pretend fun strategy to get my sisters to stay out of my room, but also <laughs> it ended up benefiting me in, in many ways. And I'll tie that into how do we use the imaginary friend concept as we're <clears throat> thinking about the S, which is story or situation. Um, with respect to relationships. Now with relationships, there's all different aspects, just like any area of our life that we could consider as we're going to go through the soul framework with respect to relationships. You know, I personally need a personal assistant and somebody to help me with things. So I could look at how am I going to figure out that situation, that relationship, romantic interests, business partners, um, people we want to partner with or, or team up with or work with on projects, friends um, to do social things with, not so much during COVID, but after that or during the changes of that, we still want to find ways to actually socially interact with human beings, other human beings, family members, our kids, our parents, our sisters, our brothers, our, um, our friends, our aunts and uncles, whatever. And then relationships with strangers, which again, during COVID, I don't know if anyone else is experiencing it, but I think that the way people interact with one another since COVID has dramatically changed um, since before COVID. So I'm noticing changes there. And then our relationship with ourselves. We can always work on and use the SOAP framework on our relationship with ourselves. Now, I personally haven't picked which of these categories I'm going to use yet, but I have decided I'm going to use the imaginary friend technique uh, to think about my story and share my story, my current situation, my current story. And then what do I want? My desired story. What do I want my story to be? What do I want my situation to be? How do we do this? Now, some of us don't have any problem talking to ourselves. We will talk to ourselves all day long, out loud even. And other people have a really hard time with it. So I like to use the imaginary friend technique when I want to say something out loud. There's incredible power in saying things out loud, just like there's power in writing things down. Just like, and we haven't talked about affirmations or affirmations at all yet, but affirmations are a really powerful strategy, but they're more powerful if you say them out loud, if you write them down and say them out loud. Uh, I actually have affirmations recorded on my phone, my cell phone, and I can listen to them in my own voice, which makes them more powerful. Affirmations are goals stated as if you have them already. At least that's a quick and dirty definition of them. So there's power in saying things out loud. So what if you, you can, and if you've got a real friend, a real person that you can tell your story to and be 100% authentic and honest and open with them about what your current situation is and what you want, that's 
even better because then you're getting, you know, third party validation or second party validation. And <clears throat> that's awesome. But most of us, let's be honest, we're not going to tell anybody exactly how we feel and think about any area or aspect of our life and the current situation that we're in. If we're being 100% honest with ourselves, a lot of times we don't want to tell anybody that. And even worse is we don't want to tell people what we really, really want because we think they'll judge us. We think they'll, you know, criticize or give us advice that we don't necessarily want or they'll tell us that we don't deserve it or that we're too, you know, who do we think we are to want that, you know, because that's how they feel about themselves. So the way around that is to create an imaginary friend and tell your imaginary friend. Now, I just deep by default created my imaginary friend when I was a kid and have created, I call it a mastermind team now, but I talk to my dad sometimes and I imagine that I'm bouncing ideas off of him because he is one of the smartest, most amazing people that I've ever met. And he was really good with people and with people would say he wasn't because he was a lot like me, a little bit in your face. This is how I see it. You can see it and do whatever you want, but this is my experience. Um, and he was very direct, but he cared very deeply about people. And I, and I love that about him. So sometimes He's the person that I'll act as my imaginary friend and I will bounce ideas off of. But basically, what our challenge is today, and it's going to be hard for a lot of people, is find a quiet place where probably people won't overhear you so you're not embarrassed. Uh, I do it when I go for a walk. When I go for a walk, I will talk to my imaginary friend because I'm usually out in the, the wilderness or nature by myself and nobody's going to hear me. Not that it matters, but, you know, I, I, I don't need to to deal with people coming with you know white coats to take me away so find a quiet place and talk to your imaginary friend out loud say what your current story is about the area that you're working on for the soul framework what is your current situation describe it to the person describe it in as much detail as you want but as if you're talking to this imaginary person this friend this and it's a friend the, the key word is friend here it's somebody that will support you and is on your side no matter what so you can tell them anything, right? It's it's as good as talking to yourself, but without the negative self-talk, right? So it's better. So you're going to tell them your current story, and then you're going to tell them exactly what you want it to be. So I'm going to tell George today exactly what my current situation is with respect to relationships, whichever relationship I decide. I really haven't decided which one. I want to kind of go back and see which ones I've already done. I think I did myself in one challenge this year. I think I did... Um, an assistant in another or a team member in another. Um, and I don't know, I can't remember what I did in the others, if I even did relationships, because I think it's only been the last two challenges that I've broken down and done this way where I've really gone deep into the soul framework in at least three areas and then an example in each of the other four. It's only been the last challenge in this one. So I'm going to pick one. I'm going to pick one, probably one I haven't done. I mean, I'd really like to do myself because I'm continuously improving and always working on myself. And I have 100% control over working on my relationship with myself. I don't have to count on anybody else for that. Any other relationship, I have to involve other people, right? I have to get help. I, I can't do a relationship with another person by myself. So I haven't decided, but I will pick an area and I will tell George what my current situation is and exactly what I want as my ideal situation. Because then tomorrow we can start looking at how are we going to fill the gap? Because I guarantee in all areas and aspects of my life, with respect to relationships, what my current situation is, isn't what my ideal desired situation is. So there's always going to be that gap. So that's our assignment for today. Our assignment is to create, if you don't have an imaginary friend, make one up. Maybe it's your ideal your ideal customer, maybe if you're a business owner, maybe it's um, the person that you would like to be your best friend, whatever, but make up an imaginary friend. And I thought imaginary friend went pretty good with relationships. Um, so <clears throat> talk to your imaginary friend today. Tell them your current situation. Tell them your desired situation. And then for sharing today, all we're going to do to share is share how you felt doing this exercise doing this experiment i guarantee you're going to feel if you've never done anything like this before i guarantee you're going to feel silly embarrassed funny but i want to see what else comes up 
I want to see what else comes up for you and if you have any aha moments or lessons learned or if you find it a waste of time or powerful. Share all of it in the comments below because I want to know if I'm the only one that uses this or if other people do it too. All right, have an awesome day. I will go do my homework and share it in my little journal. I, like I said, the power of writing things down, power of saying things out loud. I'm doing it right along with you. And you can tell I've done it because I get little smiley faces when I actually do it. That's it. Any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with the O in our SOAP framework because O comes after S in SOAP. And we'll talk about and uh, answer any questions you have about this particular exercise have a tool i guess it's a tool i think of um all these things as different tools that i can have in my toolbox and i pull them out when it feels like the right thing to do do i talk to myself all the time a lot more than i probably should admit but not all the time but when i need to talk to myself i talk to myself when i need to do the imaginary friend and have an imaginary friend to bounce ideas off of i talk to them i don't always do it out loud it depends where i am if i'm in a a place with a lot of people i'm not going to start talking to an imaginary friend out loud again the white coats have an awesome day catch you tomorrow bye go do this get up and go